All right, everyone, we wanted to take a few minutes to talk about the major rainfall on Monday, January 22nd, and then highlight uh, the changes coming up with warm weather and Santa Ana wind, then the next chance for significant precipitation in early February. These forecasts are issued daily by NOAA National Weather Service. It's important to understand what these maps are trying to display. The next precipitation potential is early February as shown on the left-hand side and temperatures on the right-hand side. The dark green shaded is high confidence of over 70% that precipitation during that period, that period January 31 through February 4th will be above normal. It's not indicating that precipitation will be very heavy or light or an atmospheric river, it's indicating that, let's show an example. In San Diego, if your annual precipitation is 10 inches, if you average about two inches in December and January each month, so that one week period, you would expect your normal or average precipitation to be about a half an inch. So this is indicating precipitation just above a half inch for San Diego location every location would be different. So it's talking about above normal precipitation for that period. And of course, the precipitation normals are different all throughout the year. Now the outlook period, February 2nd through 8th shows the same thing, but notice it's focused on Southern California only with the darkest green. So that's the highest confidence that the last part of the jet stream or storms will be bringing the more significant precipitation into Southern California, the precipitation that is expected to be above normal for that period. And then temperatures on the right-hand side interpreted the same way behind the cold front as the jet stream sags and the storm moves through, the precipitation uh, will be occurring, but temperatures will also be below our normal averages. So if our average high is 65, that means temperatures not reaching over 65 and expected to be below that. Okay, the actual forecast weather pattern coming up. Upper level high pressure ridge. This will bring the warm temperatures to all areas through the deserts, but underneath this is the Santa Ana wind. This is the ridge or the warmth ahead of the cold Pacific storm expected for early February. Okay, what about that storm? That storm on what is shown here as an average of weather models is expected to sag across the Pacific Northwest the 31st and 1st of February. So our first chance precipitation looks to be late on the 31st or early on February 1st. Then it's not done, but the cold front moves through and secondary westerly flow or the jet stream moves across Southern California. Now I did mention atmospheric river. This depiction here is actually focused in trying to predict atmospheric rivers. So as you can see here, two different models showing two different plumes of tropical moisture moving into the West Coast. However, both of them show that the system overall uh, as the atmospheric river stands is weakening as it passes from Northern to Southern California early February. Now there's other ways to get heavy precipitation as well. And the jet stream, which is very important as we saw January 22nd, the jet stream is getting very strong. Uh, that is pumping up what we call the upper level ridge and will bring the warm weather over this weekend very powerful jet stream over 200 miles per hour. And then again, a piece of that similar to January 22nd shifts east and goes into San Diego and Southern California as shown here. Okay, now let's take a look back at what happened January 22nd. Remember there was two storms, one on Saturday, one on Monday with Monday being significant with major flooding in the San Diego area. What I'm showing here is the jet stream that extended across half of the globe, and that jet stream moved across Southern California. Being on the right side of the jet stream does two things. It gives you the best chance for heavy precipitation, 
and it also allows colder air to meet up with the warmer air to the south. You can see the lower right hand side, the blue, purple, and orange, those are showing anomalies and you can clearly see the ribbon of unusually strong jet stream extending well west of the Pacific. Now we get a lot of questions about atmospheric rivers and the projections and what passed through was an atmospheric river to our south and west with very little of that penetrating inland to San Diego. However, we had that strong, powerful jet stream lifting the atmosphere and we had unstable conditions enough to produce thunderstorms. The weather pattern um, on Monday is like this. Even though it was a split weather pattern, a large part of the southern jet stream was consolidated and moved across San Diego as shown here. Devastating flash flooding occurred in parts of the area. Here are some social media posts about that flooding. And you can see the power of the flash flood lifting and moving cars and other objects in its way. More images posted from social media and local media channels as seen here. This is the radar imagery from that day. The first flash flood warning was issued for northern San Diego County, Carlsbad, Oceanside, where Highway 78 was flooded and also parts of I-5. The second flash flood warning, as seen by the green polygon lines, was issued for the South Bay and San Diego County, all the way to the border. Radar clearly depicts pockets of very heavy rain. Those pockets of heavy rain became a very strong thunderstorm in the San Diego region as shown here. We've seen this before, such as December 6, 2018. This one was particularly intense, however, and moved right across the Metro San Diego area as the radar shows. You might be wondering what the red polygon is. That is a severe thunderstorm warning in addition to the flash flood warning for potential wind damage. And wind damage was observed such as on I-805. The rainfall totals are shown here, large amounts in the San Diego metro area, four to five inches in some places equal to what was found in Palomar Mountain in San Diego County, a normal, very wet location. Other locations are included here for you to view. Here is a focused version of San Diego County area with total rainfall. So that's rainfall between Saturday and Monday night. Now we get a lot of questions about rainfall intensity and return intervals. Information is available online shown here by NOAA. And what you can do is take your rainfall rate, if you know it, 15 minute, 60 minute, two hour, 60 minute. It's very important to get the rainfall that occurred in that duration, not a rate that is read on a weather station, but the duration and total rain. Then, you can see on the chart here, it'll show you if that was a 50, 100, 200 year. Some of our rainfall rates ended up being between 100 and 1,000 return. That was because two to three inches per hour was observed. Here's an example of rain between 10 and 11 a.m. on January 22nd. Some of these automated locations, you can see two of them, including North Island Coronado were over two inches. On our webpage, this is what it looked like with the various alerts in effect from left to right, the flood watch in dark green, the flood advisories in lighter green. Then you went to a winter weather advisory in the mountains and those deep red, those are flash flood warnings for the coast and even for the inland desert area. Barely visible on the far right is the flood warning for the San Diego River that was later issued on January 22nd. Also in San Diego, where we have deep climate records back to 1850, 
if we just plot the calendar day rainfall, 2.73 inches ended up being measured on Monday, January 22nd. That one day rainfall bumped San Diego to number four all time for calendar day. Keep in mind, storms don't always follow calendar day. Some storms will be two days or three days. Here's some of the photos across the area. These are the San Diego River flooding that was observed on Monday, January 22nd. Now on Choyas Creek, where we had some of the most devastating flooding from Mountain View all the way up into East San Diego and Choyas Park, you can see that the flooding completely stripped and damaged the concrete lining of the channel, overtopped the banks, damaged railroad tracks, swept away cars, took down poles and fences, and most importantly, and unfortunately made it all the way into property of businesses and homes in this area in East San Diego. This is dangerous flash flooding. Some more photos of the San Diego impacts along the river at the trolley station. You can see the trolley location at Fashion Valley was completely surrounded by deep water. In fact, the water was so deep in some places, any cars that were left were either halfway covered or almost completely covered by water, spilling over from the San Diego River, leaving its banks.